All right. Hello, everyone. So, um, good question came in from Melanie from uh, from the University of Esslingen uh, regarding the cash conversion cycle. Wanted to know how to, how we can uh, calculate the cash conversion cycle. So, let's let's take a quick look at this metric and see what's going on. So first thing I do usually if I'm looking for a, a way to explain something or, or even when I'm learning things myself, I like to go to this website. It's called investopedia.com. Uh, first of all, it says is a little bit of a side note, uh, but I'm just going to show you. Uh, you can go to investopedia.com and this is like an encyclopedia for investing in finance topics. But it's more than just that, it's finance and investing and economics in general, right? Even including personal finance and, and trading. Okay, so what you could find on here are a lot of really good articles, uh, you know, dictionaries, etc. So it's just a really good resource uh, for you to become familiar with. Just d go to it, look around, see what they have. You'll probably find some things that are that are helpful. Okay, so going back to what they have to say about the cash conversion cycle. So as we said in class, right, this this is a metric where we're trying to say, well, how much time does it take for this company to to go from creating a product to storing that product to selling it and getting cash, right? And that, that key word there is the cash part. When are they getting the cash? So here's the simple definition, right? The cash conversion cycle equals our days um, days of inventory outstanding plus our days sales outstanding minus the days payable outstanding. So what we're saying is, you know, how long we have something in inventory? Uh, how long does it take for us to get our money from from selling it? Um, so that we add those two days together. So basically, I say, well, it takes me 15 days. I hold it in inventory, and then it takes me uh, another say 15 days to get my money from you. Say in accounts receivable, that's 30 days total, right? That's that it takes me to get cash, but I might not have to pay all my cash out at, up front, right? So I might have an accounts payable uh, or days of accounts payable to let me know that actually it's shorter than 30 days. So maybe in that case, I pay most of my accounts um, in 20 days or something like that. So then my, my cash conversion cycle would be 10. So let's look at that uh, more than just listening to me talk about it. All right, so we go here. This is our our fake company financials that we've been looking at, um, and first we just let's just go ahead and identify what we're looking for. So days in inventory, looking for our collection period in days, and we're looking for our payables period. All right, so let's just go ahead and highlight those. And what I'm going to do is just create this new tab over here, right? And um, and we'll just we'll just kind of steal some of the some of the formulas let's let's just highlight these um, put them back here all right so now we have that and now we will want to see the um, 2004 2005 so let's try this again. All right. So we can go back to over here and look at our our uh, formula, right? This is basically we're taking the days in inventory is our average inventories, right? So we took two years of average and we divide that by what? We're dividing it by B7. So that's our cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold tells us the cost of each of those unit of this in the inventories. And we're taking the average daily cost of that. So let's go over here and just do that really quick. So we, again, we take the average of our inventories and here we can do it like this, taking over the past year. And then we're going to divide it by our cost of goods sold divided by 365, just like that. Yep, and fix my error there. And let's just do a quick check and make sure that it's the same, should be Yes, six was in 2004, so I have them backward, right? And then we go to our collection period, and our collection period is taking our average receivables divided by our sales uh, per day. Okay, so let's go back here, and and there's a faster way we could do this. We could we could copy the formula uh, if we had everything in the 
financials the exact same, but um, but we'll just we'll just do it this way. It's never bad to get some practice doing doing the formulas. So we have our receivables period. That's how long is uh, that's what we're collecting, uh, or our average receivables that we are collecting, and we're going to divide that by our sales, right? Because we're receiving via sales uh, per day. Yes, automatically. Um, and then I'll, I'll change all the format on this on all of them. And then finally we have our payables. So let's just go back and, and check our payables, right? So here, I, I'm pushing F2, by the way, when I'm, when I'm doing this. It just, um, that gets you into the edit mode on the cell. So I push F2 on the cell and it tells me that it's B27, that's our accounts payable, uh, divided by the cost of goods sold um, uh, per day, right? So let's now go back and look at our payables period. So our payables, accounts payable, up there, divided by our sales divided by 365. All right, and let's get those all to be the same. And you know what, we can just take away all those decimals. Okay. All right, so so one thing you probably notice is that up here uh, we we use the the average, right? We use uh, the the average of, of those accounts, and here we just use the account. We can do the same thing if we wanted to average out our, our payables. So so let's let's just do that just to see what the difference is. I mean, it's always good to have some curiosity. So take the average here, and then we'll again we're just going to divide it by our sales, right here. Per day, but we have to make sure we put this in brackets so that we're not messing up the formula. Okay, and as you can see, it's going to be a little bit different. And what that's going to do is smooth out some of the the differences. Let's look at the the numbers. So so it's going to smooth out over time any changes that we have, right? But it should be directionally um, approximately the same. So let's just go ahead and call this one like payables, and we'll call it the days average or we'll call it using average all right so and, and we'll just show the difference on that so then we want to see what our cash conversion cycle is and let's do our cash conversion cycle average and let's put our our time in here and you'll see why I'm doing that in a second so what we're going to do is take the sum of our inventory and collection period. Remember, those are the DIO and the, I think they called the DSO uh, on there. I mean, you'll see different acronyms, but the point is we're taking the inventory and the days it's taking us to receive our money. And then we're going to subtract the days it takes us to pay out our money, right? Because that gives us a little bit of an offset. So there we have our cash conversion cycle of 26.3 days. And again, we can do the same thing for our if we if we wanted to see what the the difference is going to be from from using the average and it's 26.9 right so slightly different um, just enough to, to nudge us in one direction or the other um, on, on on rounding but not a huge difference right over time okay so maybe one one way to illustrate that is we can just go ahead and insert a chart uh, and and just look at it let's see what's see what this um, see what this company's cash conversion cycle is doing. So let's take this and let's just change the f the formatting so that it's uh, we'll put the minimum at I don't know twenty. Just just so you can see the numbers a little bit better. But what you see is is you know when you take the average, it's smoothing out over time, and and you see kind of a, a downward trend. So that uh, you know, using the averages from 2006 to 2007, it's going to have a downward pull on on the the cash conversion cycle. Whereas if you were to look at just the pure trend, right, of of how these numbers are evolving, um, you know, we see an upward an an upward trend. So the overall message you're getting from that could be conflicting, but you as an analyst would be able to look at this or as a manager and say, okay, well, what what is this telling me? Well, if I look at my cash conversion cycle, it's, it's between 26 and 33 days. Um, the biggest question would be, you know, is that 
is that good or bad compared to um, what others in our industry are doing? Is that normal for this type of business? You know, if it was normal to convert uh, cash, uh, you know, within 15 days uh, within the business and you're at 30, then you would be doing really bad. If the normal was twice as long, if it was 60 days and you're converting cash at 30, that would be extremely good. Um, I know that sounds very simple, right? It's very obvious uh, to you, very intuitive, but it's that's that's the point.